Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays, where it's time for your weekly update of Factorio Space Exploration with Crastorio 2. The big news this week was that I, um, I've still been spending all my time out on Okinaya and I have finally built a, I finally solved the uh, power problem once and for all in a rather drastic and just oh for goodness sake kind of way. So previously uh, you may remember that I had this huge area of solar panels that was producing fair amount of power but not remotely enough so if I select one of these we can see that yeah there's um, there's 471 megawatts being produced by the uh, by the solar by the solar power station but even despite that despite it being the bright in the middle of the day at the moment um, I'm still I still need an another another 150 megawatts coming out of the uh, nuclear power plant so yeah I thought I thought at first it would be a nice idea just to have lots and lots of solar down and have the planet run off solar during the day and then just go to sleep during the night and I mean, technically it kind of worked, but there just wasn't enough power available. So, yes, I spent some time at the beginning of the episode designing up a nuclear power station. I then scrapped it because it had massive fluid throughput issues and um, borrowed uh, Mark's design instead. So that's been much more effective. Um, so what we've got over here is, is basically what you'd expect. It's a two by two nuclear uh, reactor array. We've got um, you, uh, we've got fuel cells being made here. This steel is coming down as an overflow from the um, from the from from the um, delivery canning capsule production. Uh, I'm not 100% certain this is going to be entirely reliable, and I'll talk about why in a moment or few. But we've got some steel coming through there at least, and then we're bringing the uranium in um, by delivery cannon, and also as the overspill from the delivery cannon construction down this belt. But there's so little uranium coming through there that whilst it's handy having this here in order to use it up, it's not going to be able to keep the place running on its own. It's not going to, it certainly won't be able to keep the lights on. So yes, making the uh, making the fuel cells here, passing them around on a belt, um, goes into, goes into the uh, in, in, into the reactors. Now, because this is one of Mark's designs, we've got some uh, wonderfully complicated setup going on with the um, with the inserters over here. So, for example, here we've got uh, how does this even work? Uh, right, basically, um, when the when the fuel cell burns out in here, this inserter will put will unload it as long as there is less than fifty thousand steam in the tank like that, and then when it does unload. That sends a pulse to this inserter, which will see a um, which will get a, a pulse signal across, which will mean that will then be enabled very very briefly and will grab one of the fuel cells out of here. So the idea behind this is this is supposed to work with the uh, the uh, traditional problem that I think I've probably mentioned before. You have with nuclear power, where the, they, they always run constant. They always burn through the fuel cells at a constant rate, no matter how much power you're pulling from them. So if you're not using all of the power that's being generated, then you can potentially waste an enormous quantity of power because it will just because they will just sit there being hot, and the heat will escape into the atmosphere or something. I'm not sure exactly what the physics of it is, but that's basically what happens. So the way around that is to have a storage tank up here like this one, which is currently basically empty uh, for reasons that I should get to in a moment. Um, and then, and then, whenever that, if that, if that gets overly full, then you trigger down. Then, then, uh, then you tell this one, to tell that to stop fueling the uh, the reactors, and that will allow you to save fuel while still keeping everything running all the time. Now, the reason that you, you and you can do that just by turning off the inserter that puts the puts the fuel cells in. But then, when you do that, you have to work through all of the um, the fuel cells that have been put into the tank initially. This system with the uh, the circuit conditions and and having this one, um, no, having this one pulse when it oh no it holds when it, while it's while it's unloading it the advantage of doing that is it causes then this this one to then load load up only when this one unloads one so that means you get end, end up with one fuel cell in, in the uh, in the in the um, reactor all the time and you don't have to worry about burning through all the excess ones the downside of it is that if we ever have a shortage of the uh, of the uranium fuel cells for whatever reason then the whole system will break because you'll unload the fuel cell it won't be able to load a new one in and then it never will. So at that point, if it does get to that point, you then have to go around and manually restock everything by by literally manually dropping a fuel cell into each reactor, or by fiddling with the circuit conditions. So it's a little bit, it's not quite ideal, but it is. It, it has the it has the big, big advantage that it, it it means you don't have to burn through quite as much fuel when the when the steam tanks fill up. So I imagine we've hopefully got everything balanced reasonably well here. No, we have a shortage of. Uh, okay, we also have a shortage of water here, which is going to mean that we're probably probably going to be wasting a fair amount of um, heat from that and that's because water on this planet is a bit of a difficulty water is as you might remember from earlier videos being brought in by ice from um, from another from um, Norvis and then melted in here in order to make water which is then passed out into the rest of the system now this 
sort of works. We, we've got the water being then passed through here to make to grow the trees, to make the uh, make make the chuck, make the coke, to make the steel, and so on. We've got water passing through over here to in order to keep the um, it's through here. Or do we just give off steam? No, come the ice. It comes in down here in order to keep in order to cool the um, the vulcanite furnaces and produce the steam, which we then turn back into water and so on and so on. So there are there are some nice little loops going on here of of, um, of, of water, but also. The, um, the nuclear power plant gets through quite a lot of water. Now, I am using the condensing turbines, that's these ones, and they put, they give back a significant proportion of the um, the energy, the water that's used. Oh yeah, 99% of the steam is returned as water. So, we're getting through 1% of the amount of water that we otherwise would be, but it's still not being brought in in sufficiently large quantities to keep the whole system happy. So, I think I might need to put in some more of these chemical plants up here, melting the water, melting the ice into water, in order to just keep the system up and running, or perhaps speed module this, but then I think we might run into a problem with how fast the inserter can pass the ice across. So, it's working, but it's not quite working well enough, so we're being a little bit wasteful. But still, that's um, it's a good start. It is keeping the system, it is keeping the the planet up and running. So I can't complain too much about that. But there is a shortage of water going into it. Now, one of the possibly one of the reasons having it struggling a bit is because I am also passing the steam out down this pipe over here in order to fill up all of these tanks. Uh, it's not quite working, but in theory, it's filling up all of these tanks, and that's to allow me to protect against a coronal mass ejection should one of those happen. So I've got the umbrella defence here, all of the turbines here, and hopefully that'll kick in and protect me from a coronal mass ejection. Um, <clears throat> the problem is that is an enormous amount of steam that's been taken away so it's quite possible actually that once these finally fill up and get once once we reach a sort of an equilibrium level here then the water will actually be sufficient uh, we just need to fill up what we just need to get quite a lot of it available initially to start with to get things working so i think a bit of tidying up around here is definitely required and that will hopefully let things start working a bit more nicely and I think what I'll probably want to do is put in a pump on this steam pipe here to make sure it's pushing all of the steam out. Just get these tanks filled up so we can forget about them. And then see what happens. And probably put in another machine up here to melt the, melt the ice as well. However, this is still much, much better than the system we had before We're using the solar. Because if we look back over the last few hours, you can see the solar going up and down like this. The nuclear going up and down in sort of response to it. But it does mean that everything is now fully happy. All of my core mining drills have been working solidly flat out since we got that installed. And so things are now much, much better than they were before. Even if there are some um, issues with the system that need a little, still need a little bit of work. Oh, and I should probably mention that as part of the setting up the steam battery over here to be filled by the nuclear reactor, I've also cut off all of these boilers because they were the ones that previously were taking the energy from the solar panels, boiling water into steam to use for the battery. And I don't really want that anymore, so I'll just, I'm just going to eliminate all of these. That'll, that'll make things much, uh, much, more, much more efficient, I suspect, because we're making, making the steam directly from the nuclear system rather than going via electricity. So, having all of this extra electricity allowed me to do a few things, like I went out, I built up some more um, vulcanite core mines, uh, only a couple of those because it's quite long, it's, it's a fair amount of effort in building the railway lines to go out and, and build them, um, but still, I think I'm going to be doing a bit more of that. I also put in this mine here, which isn't quite finished because once again I ran out of drills, there's a bit of a running theme here, but the idea is that this is then going to pull up actual vulcanite ore rather than vulcanite core fragments, and that will hopefully allow me to run things a bit quicker. I used all of these underground belts like this because I had loads of underground belts but very very few um, actual red belts, so I, I wanted to save some here just to get this finished off. Uh, so this is, yeah, this is pulling up the vulcanite ore as opposed to vulcanite uh, core fragments, and you can see the difference on the diagram here. You t the vulcanite core fragments are the ones that are truly un limited but are well they're unlimited by quantity in total um, but they're limited by time so where this where there's 25 million in this patch you can take and you can take that out as fast as you like as long as you put the right drills on it whereas say this patch here with the um, with, with the core miner is completely unlimited it will keep going forever but it will only run at 1.7 per second which is pretty slow as you can see so that's the difference between the two. Um, this one enables me to get hold of the Vulcanite much more quickly. So I think that's quite, that's, given what's been going on, that's quite valuable. Then that has allowed me to, having the extra uh, inputs on the, on the Vulcanite um, crop cores has allowed me, in theory at least, I noticed the station has now emptied itself, but in theory it means I've got a lot more of the core fragments available. So I, as well as this pulverizer system here, I put in a second one over here that's feeding down to um, 
this one's feeding down into, into a separate oh yeah so we're feeding down into a separate warehouse down here and then passing that on to an, the next set, stage of pulverizing i'm not quite sure why i even got these warehouses in here to be honest it was to to, to, to allow me to create backlogs well uh, back when i was when i had um when it was a bit more bursty but I, I don't think there's any point i should probably take them out for ups reasons uh so yes we'll get we'll get rid of that we're then pulverizing it again to produce more of the crushed and the enriched, small amounts of enriched, and the stone. And we're, I'm putting those back into the into the same um, same warehouse all the way over. Uh, where is it? Uh, yeah, down here. So we've got both of these both of these crushing facilities, pulverizing facilities, are then feeding into this warehouse, which is feeding the enrichment facility down here. And that's allowing me to get a nice steady flow now of both the enriched and the uh, crushed coming out. To the point where I think I've actually got more than I need. Um, and I'm going to need to start thinking about perhaps finding a way to make this run a bit more quickly. So that could mean putting in blue belts along here. Or it could mean putting in a second red belt to carry. Having one red belt for the enriched and one red belt for the pulverized or crushed coming along here. And finagling it in in some sort of cunning way to allow these uh, facilities to load both in. I'm not quite sure how I'd do that, but I'm sure whether you know where there's a will, there's a way. I'm sure I could come up with something, some way of doing that. Um, yeah, so this needs needs this needs a bit of a boost. So as you can see, we've got three. Well, these machines are not running quite as fast as I would like them to, um, simply because they're getting through their inputs faster than they they're producing the outputs. So that could do with a little bit of a nudge in the uh, in a way to, in order to improve it. But at the moment, it is basically working. It's using up pretty much all of the um, all the vulcanite that's coming through, and it's turning it all into all vulcanite early products and turning it into actual vulcanite cubes, which we can then feed out down the bottom here. <clears throat> As a further extension, I've got this system over here, which I've started. Well, I've blueprinted. I haven't actually really, obviously, haven't built it yet, because you can see, because it's all ghosts at the moment. And this is the one that's going to be fed from that new mine I put in, the one down here that's just pulling the the vulcanite ore straight out of the ground. So because I mean, despite even though I've doubled and doubled again because the first doubling came from improving the power supply to the point where it runs all the time rather than just during the day and then doubling again by putting in twice as many pulverizers even though I've done all of that we're still not producing well we're not producing as much vulcanite as I would like to we'll talk about the actual amounts in a moment so I built this over here to go from the do it in easy mode where we're not worrying about the rate of core miners we can just pull it out with drills which is much faster. Uh, so over here again, we've got the same sort of thing. We've got the crushing of it down to into uh, the crushed vulcanite, enriching it into it in, enriched, and then cooking it into the cubes over here. This can then be fed all the way along here through these all these underground belts. Yes, I'd run out. Of st this is another fat uh, casualty of me having run out of belts and put into this warehouse here. So we'll have a bit more coming in here. So once I've done that. That should be a massive increase in the amount of vulcanite I'm able to produce. At least once I've gone in, sort of ironed out all the bottlenecks and just made sure the whole system will run as fast as I want it to. So we've then got the uh, the outputs of this are, are, are split, as you can see. We've got one output coming over here and one down here. This one goes straight to Norvis um, because we, we need we need huge amounts of uh, vulcanite on Norvis, as I'll show you in a few minutes. We've been up we, we're up been doing upgrading upgrades to the uh, smelting, so there's lots and lots of lots and lots of pyroflux needed for that. So yes, we've got so we've got two delivery cannons, these two here that are just constantly firing at Nor well, no, firing at Norvis as fast as they can, as fast as the vulcanite comes through, just to keep Norvis as stocked up as possible. Then on the other side, we've got the delivery cannons that are going to other planets. So in this case, we've got this one going to Njord, this one going to Kothar, and this one will eventually be going to Talos, but I haven't set Talos up to uh, to use it yet. <clears throat> and the point of this is that uh, the reason it's set up the way it is, with funny belts doing funny businesses around here, is that Talos, is that Kothar requ absolutely requires Vulcanite, because you can't make Iridium without Vulcanite. Um, whereas Njord, and actually Talos, so the prioritization uh, Njord and Talos like to have Vulcanite because if you if, if they have Vulcanite they can produce um, Holmium or Beryllium in a more efficient way but it's not absolutely vital so I've set this up to essentially to prioritize um, uh, Kothar for the Iridium production but not but but then any overflow can then go to the other two and the overflow is mostly coming from the insert and not swinging around quickly enough so maybe I should use more splitters and uh, and prioritization so absolutely all of it goes to Kothar for now we'll we'll see how Mike is getting on with his with his Iridium with his um uh, Vulc Vulcanite needs it may well be that this that this fills that this catches up at some point and then and so we're okay 
So yes, the, re the reason I was going to one one of the things I said I, I will look back at is the production graph. So if we have a look in here, if we I can I can do searches and, and see how production is going on various different types of um, thing. So if we look for, for, at first at the vulcanite cubes over the last hour, for example, now you can see that we've produced thirty five thousand and we've used up thirty three thousand. I think that's just due to having sent some out to um, uh, to Kothar where it's not really being used yet. It's not, but the numbers are the numbers are pretty close and these graphs are. I'm not going to say they're tracking each other closely because there's some funny business in delays and things going on there. Basically, the, all the all the vulcanite we're producing is being is being consumed on the other side. Now, if we look up pyroflux instead, uh, and that's a fluid, so we need to look over here. You'll see that over the last hour, we've produced 479,000 pyroflux, but we've only used uh, 305,000, and we've been maxing out at sort of well, the the average over the last ten minutes, it's all it's very uppy downy. But we've been producing about seven. We've produced about seven point eight thousand per minute, and we're using about six thousand per minute. So those numbers are quite different, which makes makes me think that the pyroflux um, on Norvis has been the, the the vulcanite we're shipping over to Norvis has been filling up the buffers with pyroflux over there. And so and so once the, once the pyroflux buffers fill up, then the vulcanite buffers will fill up, and then Norvis will actually have enough. So I think at the moment. Right now, we have enough vulcanite being produced for the current needs of the base. Now, this will probably change very, very soon. We'll start using more of it on Kothar. We'll start using it out on um, uh, on uh, Talos and on Njord. And so that's going to put a big dent in the amount of... Uh, or it's going to put a big increase in the amount of uh, vulcanite being used. And so that's why that's why I'm continuing to expand. And I'm going to go, yes, we'll have another production facility over here. Just to make sure... Just to keep it going. Keep, keep, keep it going. Make that extra um, vulcanite that we're definitely going to need at some point in the not-too-distant future. Because I'm... I'm Yeah, I'm basically certain that this is not going... This, this, this is, is enough for now. It's enough to keep Norvis happy. Um, and it's filling up the buffers, but it's not going to be enough to keep the entire system happy for very long. So we are going to need to, we're going to still need to expand this, but right now, at this very, very specific moment in time, we have enough. And I'm phrasing it like this because I know if I say, oh yeah, we've got enough vulcanite, uh, in, in a couple of weeks when we go, oh no, we haven't got enough vulcanite, people will say, will say, ah, you said we've got enough. So I'm saying, no, no, no. I'm saying we have enough right now, but we're not going to have enough for very long, I'm fairly sure. <laughs> Oh, as a side on the uh, nuclear power generation, I should probably mention that because we're playing with K2 and all that sort of shenaniganery, we've got this, um, we've got a, we've got a centrifuge that's turning uh, used up uranium fuel cells back into uranium-238, so we can use that to make more fuel cells, which is good. Um, possibly the prioritization here is, is, is struggling a little bit, and I might need to make it a little bit cleverer. We shall see. Um... Or how much did that use? No, 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 that used up all the uranium-238 from here, so that's okay. So what I was what I was saying here is, is yes, it does produce the uranium-238, but because this is K2, it also produces stone, and occasionally, when it feels like it, it produces tritium of all things, and I have no idea what we're going to do with tritium at this stage of the game, because this is, because it's it's something we've just been given when we haven't got any actual uses for it yet. Yes, I could look at FNEI and see what it's used for, but at the moment, um, we do, I, I don't think we've developed anything that will use the tritium. So at the moment, this this flows up here. The stone should go into the um, in, into the pulverizer up here and be turned into sand to go off in, to be shipped off to Njord for Tristan. Uh, I haven't put that in yet. I do need to. The tritium, I have no idea. We'll probably end up putting it in a delivery cannon and just sending it to Norvis because that's what we do with stuff that we don't want. Um, but basically, I uh, it is a thing. But as you can see, we've only got that looks like about 15 of it so far so it's not something we're going to be producing enormous amounts of so i'm not too worried about it just yet but i am aware that it is something that i'll probably have to worry about in the not too distant future speaking of stone and sand and stuff um you'll notice now that we've now essentially we've got through all of the stone that was building up in this uh, in this warehouse ages ago it has all been converted into sand and sent basically all been dumped down here into this chest and sent off by delivery cannon to new York because Tristan has that insatiable appetite for stone, for sand that I've been mentioning in the past. So we're sending loads of that over to him, just like that. He's, he's very, very happy to receive it. And so we've actually managed to get now, we've also managed to get through the backlog in here as well. That's the intended amount that's supposed to be in this warehouse. So you'll notice that the dump belt is, it's not empty because we are still topping it up. We're still producing stuff, of course, and we're still, so we're still getting rid of lots of the um, resources down the dump belt here. But it is all getting used up and disposed of as quickly as it's produced. So we don't have any sort of backlogs. Nothing is jammed up. Everything is working really, really nicely. Um, and because Tristan has that insatiable appetite for sand, we've pretty much stopped sending uh, glass over to Norvis with, the, from, with, with this system here. Uh, which is, which is 
Speaking of things, be, of, of byproducts and side side effects and things like that, when you pulverize your vulcanite cores, that releases a load of pyroflux, which I'm currently just stockpiling in this um, in in this tank, which goes up which goes up about. 30 or 40,000 per um, per stream. So I've got another couple of weeks before I really, really need to worry about it. But it is gradually increasing. So we do have that stored there. And as I was saying, Pyroflux is in really high demand over on Norvis. So it'd be great to send it over there for, uh, for, for so it can be used up. The problem is, the only way to send Pyroflux is to put it in a barrel and send it by delivery cannon. And um, this barrel generation system is running off the uh, st steel uh, overflow from, from here. So this is this is the uh, the, the um, delivery cannon production system we've talked about a million times before. The iron comes out of here occasionally. There's some iron coming in, and then it comes out. It goes into here. It's made into steel. It's passed onto this belt. This belt from here, all all of that steel then gets grabbed up and eaten by the, these machines that are making the low density structures and uh, heat shield tiles. Um, sometimes they back up uh, um, and then they go into this chest where they're made into delivery cannon capsules and so on. Now sometimes they do back up a little bit, and at that point a little bit of steel sometimes sneaks through. It's not happening at the moment, as you can clearly see, those machines are greedily grabbing all of it and just turn, turning it into the bits and pieces they need. Um, <clears throat> but then we, we feed that off, that then any overflow steel can then come down here, potentially be made into barrels, or if not, then fed all the way down here, down, 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 down here, to be made into... Um, be made in, 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 into fuel cells. So we do need a bit of an overflow of steel coming out of here and we're not getting it and that's potentially going to be a problem. Um, the question is how do I deal with that? I could come along here, I could I could take out the I could take out these machines, uh, stop making stop making low density structures here. That would that would save a, a huge amount of steel. Ooh, there's one that's nearly getting through. Nope, it got grabbed by that machine. Um, so that would save quite a lot of steel because then we, we wouldn't be using it, we wouldn't be using uh, what is it 10 per machine? Uh, oh no, it's only two steel plates per, per, per build. But we get rid of that. Um, but then potentially we'd, uh, we'd have an overflow of plastic, maybe I suspect. Well, I don't know. Maybe we'd have an overflow of plastic. I'm not quite sure what what is being where it's where it's all going. Um, <laughs> maybe it could get turned into explosives instead. But then instead, but then we'd need more coal. And no, uh, I don't know. It's all a bit, it's all a bit difficult. Or we, if, 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 um, and also, if, if we did pull up this one, we'd definitely get an overflow of copper um, because it's quite cleverly balanced all around the copper. So the, the not making them isn't a problem because we can bring them in by delivery cannon and drop them into this chest. The system do, does that already. That's quite nice. But we'd then, but if we, um, but if we just let, let, if we just relied on that, then we'd have an overflow of copper that we wouldn't be able to get rid of. We're not using copper for anything else on this planet. So then we'd start to have problems there. Uh, we could dump it down here and have another delivery cannon that gets rid of it, but that seems possibly foolish. I don't know. I don't know. So it's it, it's a, it's a difficult one. Is basically is basically what I'm trying to get at here. Similarly, down here, um, this one's probably could be less of a problem actually, because this is just using up coal. Is it using coal? No, it's using sulfur and sulfur, steel, and stone. Now, all of the, none of those things are particularly. Would it, would it be a particularly problematic if we overflowed on? So maybe the answer here is to get rid of these machines that are making heat shield tiles and just rely on them being brought in from Norvis. Um, it's a little bit of an odd one, though. Another improvement that's been put in here on this system is that we've now got a, we've now got a buffer here that can hold uh, excess delivery cannons in a chest, and that's hooked up to this, this uh, com decider combinator here that that basically only passes the signals from this, com this constant combinator through to the the whole system and specifically this transmitter when there's no delivery cannon capsules in there. So if this fills if, if if the whole backlog on these belts fills up as it has done, then we'll stop pulling in all of the resources to make delivery cannons from Norvis, and eventually that'll that'll stop. Um, that sort of goes a little bit, a little bit against what I was saying earlier about feeding in all the other resources. But I think, yes, I think the best thing for me to do, and I'll think about this further before I actually do it and see what other other people say. But I think the best thing for me to do here would be to take out the, um, the heat shield tile production down here and all the belts that feed up to it and so on and so on. Have the heat shield tiles all come in from Norvis um, and use the other resource and, and and still use up the copper for making the. Um, making the, the low density structures. Hopefully then there'll be enough overflow uh, uh, steel coming through here that will pour down here and then we'll be able to make some barrels and also have some flow past in order to make the, um, uh, the fuel cells. I think what I'll probably also do is put a splitter in here so half of it goes either way and that way we can know that um, we're not starving one, we're not starving the, uh, the nuclear power plant in order to make barrels. Um, or I could just wait for it to fill, or or I could put this, or I could prioritize the splitter to wait for it to fill up all the way back to here. So there's always definitely going to be enough for power because power is much more important. 
Okay, that was that's that's a lot of stuff. Is um is that everything I want to say about Agnair? Almost certainly not, but I've been talking for quite a long time already. <laughs> Oh yes, the other thing is, um, this is another uh, Mark special, he's designed a uh, system built around delivery cannons that makes um, meteor defences. So tucked away in here we've got a, um, a delivery cannon chest that will eventually, when, well when the thing gets turned on, uh, it's not turned on, oh it's not, it doesn't have a transmitter, okay. Eventually, <laughs> when this thing is set up properly, um, it will pull in iron and copper and steel and sulphur and ice and wood. Uh, and you can, you can supply any of those locally if you want, just by dumping them straight into the into the delivery cannon chest. Uh, it'll pull all of those in. It'll melt the ice into water. It'll make that into sulfuric acid. Uh, it'll make that into batteries. And uh, make the copper into cables and in, in, into circuits. And make all of that into deliver into uh, meteor defense ammunition, which come around here, put into this into it onto this belt here, where it'll then get fed into this um, this cannon, which feeds it down to this one, 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 and out to these ones as well. And this gives you good meteor defense without having to actually make all of the stuff on site because all of it's, it's basically just going to be brought in by delivery cannon so you can slap it down ask mark to set it set up the uh, cannons to fire out fire out here for you and it's just done simple <laughs> that's the plan anyway um we do however have quite a lot of um delivery cannon ammunition available on this planet in fact i can probably put that up to 2000 we'll have a beef a beef bot frenzy no a brief bot frenzy as the uh, logistics logistics bots bring another well, there's um, into, there's 216, there's there's 600 more available, so we'll bring all those over here anyway, um, and, and just to keep the system running. So it's going to be a little while before I need to make sure this is working properly, but I do need to get it working. Um, actually, no, there is there is a transmitter here. Well, I, well, I missed that completely. So actually, it just just looks like the the other end hasn't been set up. Otherwise, we'd have a lot of stuff being fired in, fired in by now. Oh no, this needs to be named as well. So, but anyway, this this is all built. It just needs a little bit of programming, and then it'll start to work. So at this point. Agnair is working really, really nicely. As I, as I said, we've sort of got enough um, Vulcanite being produced. Uh, I'm going to boost it anyway. I reckon this this system should double it again um, and allow us to get a lot more coming through. And to be honest, I think with a little bit of redesign, it's going to be more than a doubling. So we're going to have loads of Vulcanite available, which is going to be really, really nice because we've been absolutely starved for that over, uh, all the way up until now. Um, but uh, it just needs a few more bits and pieces being brought to be brought over. So I'm going to bring out another rocket with lots and lots of red belts and a few other bits and pieces besides to get this finished off, get this up and running, and then I might actually be able to go off and do something else. You never know. <laughs> That'd be quite nice. So yeah, that's um, that's Agnea. I've been very very busy out here. Lots and lots has been done. Oh, and a train's just pulled in. We've now got <laughs> a few, a couple of thousand um, core chunks available. So those are going straight into the processing system. Oh, there's only a smallish gap across there. Maybe we're not. Maybe the problems aren't quite as bad as I was suggesting. Even so, I think I think another thing I'll be doing before I go is put in a few more core mining sets, uh, drills. Uh, so yeah, this is this is going quite well. Um, I, I think uh, just need just needs a little bit more tweaking here and there. So, I hope you're enjoying the videos. Um, if you are, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. I feel in the middle of the video is a good time to ask, because hopefully everybody's still watching. So yes, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, because that really helps me with uh, gro growing the channel and, and just making things better and better. Now, let's go off and have a look at uh, Norvis, where other people have been up to a few other things as well. So Norvis, as you're probably aware, if you've been watching the series for any any amount of time at all, is uh, is where Mark spends basically all of his time. So he's he's on he's on out over here on Norvis, where uh, build, building things up and essentially keeping the rest of us around the rest of the solar system supplied with all of the things we need. So we've got the um, the big arrays of delivery cannons like like this. These these are the ones that bring out all of the ingredients that are needed by. Um, by the various different uh, delivery cannon capsule construction areas. Then there's some up here that are shipping out um, ice over to me on Agnea because I need the water. They'll probably, in, at some point in the future, we'll probably put in another one of those next to it that will ship up to a Norvis orbit because eventually that's going to require ice as well. So yes, Mark is very much keeping keeping the lights on down on Norvis, making sure the biters don't do anything they shouldn't, and, uh, and keeping us supplied with all, all of the stuff we need. As part of this, um, he's added, he's improved the uh, the water supply to the ice maker because I, as I pointed out in an earlier episode, that there wasn't enough water coming in, and that was the limiting factor. Now the limiting factor appears to be how quickly we can actually use it up. <laughs> but he's done that by putting in, yeah, he's put in a second pump. So originally there was one pump pumping in at this end. Now there's a second pump pumping in water that comes up here and goes in the other end. So we've got twice as much uh, twice as much water going in. That means twice as much ice coming out. The system is now satisfied, which is nice. 
He's also added in a mineral water cannon. I would imagine that's probably well. The min I know the mineral water in the uh, in our uh, system is all being stockpiled down um, here and vented off as required. But he's also got a train taking it away. This is going to be a difficult one to find. Uh, so I might not bother unless I can spot it fairly quickly. Nope, I have no idea where he's doing it. But somewhere in the, somewhere in the base, um, mineral mineral water is being put into barrels and ready to be shipped off to Mike by delivery cannon, which is an absolutely horrible way of transporting fluids around. And if it feels bad enough with the pyroflux, but at least uh, coming from Agnea and Tashikutan, but at least that's an overflow. It's something we don't want. We're just trying to get rid of the get rid of it as much as possible. Uh, in Mike's case, he actually needs the mineral water as one of the ingredients for the iridium recipe, as, as you can see over here. And that shipping that sort of stuff around by barrel is absolutely horrific. Unfortunately, as we touched on in the videos last week, there is no mineral water on his planet, so, and it needs to come from somewhere. So it's either ship out the iridium in a very, very early stage of processing and process it somewhere else, which is also horrible, or we need to ship in the mineral water by delivery cannon, which is horrible too. So, yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a bad a choice of two bad options essentially um so we'll yeah we're just gonna but 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 um mark hasn't complained he's just got that up and running he's shipping so he's now shipping that over to mike as required he's been setting up the uh the cannons again for the meteorite defense cannons the one i was showing you earlier i don't know where that's going to be it might again um with the problem with some somebody else doing all the building work on the other planet is it means i i have no idea where a lot of the stuff is so um You'll just have to bear with me while I... Oh, here it is. There we go. So, here we have uh, all of the ingredients for um, for delivery... Ca for, for meteor defense ammunition being dropped off. And then up here... Well, first, it currently it's firing at Njord. But soon we'll have one in here to fire at Agnea. Because I've got the system in. It's just not quite finished set up, setting it up yet. And then there's another four for the next four planets that require that system to be dropped in. And this is quite neat. Because it means you, you can just you can just drop in the blueprint, program it, and hit go. You don't need to worry about shipping, the, shipping them all over by rocket. So, yeah... I, I do quite like this idea really it, and this system can carry on working just basically for the entire rest of the game because it's it's dead simple you don't need a huge amount of throughput for it and it can and it can just be left to ca carry on running even when we move on to sort of more advanced things like spaceships so yeah I think this is quite this is quite nice He's also done some um, improvements. Oops, that was the wrong button. Improvements to the uh, Norvian defenses so down here we've got an improved wall it's now gone all spiky and it's got some um, dragon's teeth along the bottom this may be more lasers i'm not actually sure um over here there's oh this is a this is a um an artillery outpost so presumably wow and um also uh, it turns out it looks like uh mark has been very very busy with the atom bombs so all of these these big scorch marks like this this is where he's dropped an atomic bomb blown up all the biters in the area and then apparently gone in and tied just done, done the done the necessary tidying as well that is that's that's a, that's a lot of atom atom bombs wow <laughs> um and these are these scars on the on the landscape are, are in fact permanent now. So these are going to be here forever. These just big dull scrapes on the on the landscape, uh, unless we unless we come out here and concrete over them. But you know it's got rid of the biters out of that area, so that that's a good thing. Oh, and he's oh, he's extended the wall down to here. So having claimed this whole area, he's also no he's made a bit of a start on defending it as well. Um, maybe maybe in the next uh, in the next episode he's going to carry on put in put clear out this area put a wall across here across here and across here and then we can have all of this area as ours and and that would mean we're able to be able to claim another three uh, core mining seams as well which would be nice because that's how we that's where we get a lot of our stuff from is that ah oh, there's there's an artillery train here in here as well so this this is Oh, that's why he's been doing quite so many, um, there's been quite so many big scorch mark areas. He's not been flying around with a jetpack lobbing out atom bombs at biters like like a peasant. He set up a, a, a train with uh, nuclear artillery, which is driving around lobbing, lobbing um, nuclear bombs at the, uh, at the poor defenseless biters fully automatically. Also, the gun on that, the gun barrel on this one looks a lot thicker than the one on that one, but I think it's just the shading and the way it's, because of the way it's, because the angle it's pointing at. Um, Right, so yes, that that explains why there's quite so much absolute devastation out here. The uh, nuclear artillery is, um, yeah, a little bit dangerous. <laughs> Here's Lawrence with understatement of the year. Beyond that, Mark has also done a few minor fixes around around the place, like sorting out um, 
sort of sorting out uh, uh, prioritizations on trains and, and signals and belts and things like that. Um, but we do, as, as I think I, I touched on before, I, uh, I think I talked about this last week, but we now have a, a copper smeltery running up here using the using the pyroflux recipe. And that's why there's been such a big demand for pyroflux recently. We've been trying to fill up these tanks to whatever level they expect to be filled up to. Uh, in order to then start making copper but it looks like we've yeah we appear to have actually got enough copper wow that's that i feel like is a hell of an achievement we've got enough copper there let's have a look down over mm, yes you yes you yes you uh, we've got enough copper there we've got enough iron here and we've got enough steel as well wow we have actually we've actually caught up with demand on all of these now i think part of that might be because we're not doing any expansion in space at the moment and we're not developing new science packs and things like that but even so that's that's hell of an achievement well done there mark for, for catch, catching up on all of the all, all the um three main raw resources there that's that's that I, that i feel like is quite an achievement and there's also a dribble of steel coming through from here, what's going on? Oh, that's a um, that that's because this is where the uh, the pyroflux barrels are coming in, for, where when when they actually eventually do, they're being emptied, then they're put into here, which crushes them, and then the excess steel goes out down this belt because that's a good way to get rid of it, which is that's fair enough actually, that's a that's a, a smart way of dealing with it. Um, that makes a lot of sense. So yes, this is where the this is. I will touch briefly on this as well because I've been talking about pyroflux a lot a, a lot earlier in the video. This is the delivery cannon where all of the uh, the vulcanite arrives. It then goes out into these machines by priority to be turned into pyroflux. When we've finally got enough pyroflux, then we'll allow some of it to be to go out the other ways as well. Oh, that those that was that was some barrels of pyroflux coming in, nice. And then a load of vulcanite coming out here as well to be processed into into pyroflux the old-fashioned way. Pull that down here into these tanks where that leg then gets loaded straight into the train, which is mostly full but for some reason this wagon seems to have a lot less in it than the other two uh three numbers are hard so yes this train basically eventually this tra eventually this train will fill up then these tanks will fill up to an ex to a certain point and then we can stop demanding quite so much vulcanite to be brought be brought through in fact actually first we'll uh, first we'll stop making it into pyroflux when these tanks get up to a certain point um which is the, cer the certain point is uh, when we have 175,000 in the in the tanks, then we'll stop making pyroflux, and that means we'll then pour all the vulcanite down this way. So we'll fill up this warehouse, these warehouses, and these this train, and then when that happens, and this backs all the way up to here, then we will finally, finally stop asking for more, 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 more pyroflux, uh, vulcanite, and the system over on Agnea can can calm down a little bit and, and concentrate on sending it out to Mike instead. Oh, this is going to take a long time to generate enough pyroflux. But, you know, we'll get there. We'll get there eventually. At the moment, as I said, at right now, as of right now, we are producing the vulcanite faster than we're using it. So, um, we're producing pyroflux faster than we're using it. Therefore, the pyroflux buffer is filling up. Therefore, eventually, we will eventually stop using vulcanite at quite the same rate. And so we will then be able to stockpile that a bit. It is going to be a while until that happens, though. As you can see, each time we drop one of these delivery cannon capsules in, a little bit of it comes out. It gets and it just disappears. It just disappears straight into, into the into the hungry, hungry moor of the factory. So it is going to be a long time until we're until we're ready to move on. And on that positive note, <laughs> let's uh, right. I think this is probably a good time to stop because this video has got a little bit longer than I intend than I'm trying to keep them down to at the moment. So um, we'll have, if, we, if we look at the map, I've talked about Agnea and Norvis. So tomorrow in tomorrow's video, I'll talk about Norvis orbit because there's been a little bit going on out here, and then I'll make my way further out into the solar system as well. So as, as usual, starting at the sun and heading outwards. So there'll be another video tomorrow that where where we'll talk about yeah Norvis orbit and the the uh, other outpost planets further further out from the sun, which uh, which are doing which are getting out some of our more exotic materials together um, then on sunday there probably won't be a video um, at least there won't be a gaming video because summarizing xcom in doesn't work in quite the same way but on monday there will be a uh, factorio stream where i should be carrying on with this i should be working hard on agnea trying to get this planet try, trying to get everything finished off on this planet and get all of these things all of these systems up and running as as i've, as I've been talking about on Wednesday, there'll be another XCOM stream, um, because I don't think I'll have finished it by then. Uh, come along, get put your name in the hat, have a soldier named after you, and be sent into extremely dangerous um, dangerous places. Um, we'll sort of see how that goes. And on Thursday, there'll be a GTA video. Tuesday, oh, Tuesday, I forgot to mention Tuesday on the way through. Tuesday, there will be a, uh, a probably be a Factorio video, depending on um, exactly what comes out then. Um... I know it's. I know there's a Factorio video coming out for non-supporters. Then it's the one that supporters have already seen, and then there should hopefully be a new video coming out for supporters as well. Because if you're a channel supporter, you get access to all the videos a week early. If you want to be a channel supporter and get that and various other perks as well, then um, make sure you're a, a YouTube 
uh, what's it, a Twitch subscriber, a YouTube member, or you put send in a donation on on Ko-Fi, which you can find a link to links to scattered all over below the video in the channel in the channel descriptions, all those sort of places where you'd expect to find these sort of things. Uh, right, and so also finally, please check out the channel sponsor, treefoil.be. They will host a Factorio or Minecraft or various other game servers for you. Uh, they're very nice and cheap, and you can get them even cheaper by using the code Lawrence Plays on checkout to get 20% off your first month. Um, and they seem to work pretty well. They're also hosting the uh, support at the server for um, supporters. So if you want to, if you are a supporter, you can come along and, and play in this in in the same universe as us and see how you can get on with it. All right. So as ever, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow and for all the streams and things. Bye-bye.